Shalom. Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Hebrew Readers Church. We are glad to spend this time with you all and we give praise to Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, and our Dono Yache Mesiaka. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at the name of the Father, Ahaya, and why that name is the name according to the scriptures in the Hebrew language that we may be guided. Firstly, let's look at what name means. The word for name in the Hebrew language, Chim, is in H8034. You want the Strong's uh, definition? Yeah. Okay. A primitive, a primitive word, perhaps rather, from H7760 to the idea of definite and conspicuous position. So it signifies a definite position. Your name describes you, describes your function. All right. Continue. Compare H A sixty four in the appellation. This is what's spoken of you. As a mark of memorial of individuality. Your name is a mark. It signifies your individuality that sets you apart from everything else or everyone else. As a mark or memorial of individuality. The memorial is something that is established to remind people of a person or event. And individuality is the quality or character of a particular person or thing that distinguishes them from others. That's right. So the name of the Father ought to distinguish him from all else. And what he has shown in Scripture that he was before everything. He was always there. He is eternal. And his name ought to exemplify his majesty right. and his glory. Or character. So, yes. And it does exemplify his character right. indeed. Let's re look at it. What he is described as, since his name ought to be a memorial of his individuality, we can look at the scriptures to see what he's described as to substantiate what his name should be describing. You look at Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hairs of his head like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. There we have first description. He was ancient of days. Ancient right. being before days, before time. That's why Ahaya is known as him that was, and is, and shall come. Because when Ahaya comes down, we're in eternity right. with him. Ahaya be gracious unto us to permit us to be. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 4 to 5. Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. Yachanan to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you in peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And him which is, was, and is to come. That's describing eternity. All right. That's describing a being that's been forever. And you can understand it just by what John explained. That he is eternal, so his name ought to signify his eternal existence. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night. Saying, Holy, 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 Adonai, Elohim, Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. These are holy cherubims, given, declaring what is, that Ahia is eternal. So, continuing this, in the Hebrew language, we can know exactly what that name is by examining the scriptures and the meanings of words. So we're hearing, He was, He is, He is to come. He's the Ancient of Days. We're seeing that He's eternal. He existed before everything. And let's look in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, where Moses literally asked him his name, and he was given a name. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. And Mushi said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Mushi, Ahaya Ashere Ahaya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ahaya hath sent me unto you. 
And we see this dialogue was very straightforward. He asked the angel of Elohim that was in the burning bush, when I go unto the children of Israel, what shall I say unto them? When they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And the angel responded, Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya. In the English, that's I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, Ahaya has sent me unto you. Yes. And just servants doing the same thing that he told Mushi to say. <laughs> Ahaya is who sent us. Ahaya is our Allah I am. And let's look at the definition for Ahaya. H1961. H1961. The strong. Mm -hmm. It means a primitive root to exist. That is become, come to pass. And then we see this word is special because this word they put in the concordance compared to 1933, which we will do in due time. But this word here itself means to exist. And this exists is from the spiritual, right. to be or become, to come to pass, and it's always emphatic. Notice this word, when this word is spoken, it's power with it. Right. It's not a mere auxiliary or copula. This is not a regular word. This word is a very powerful word, and the word still is in our language today in the Hebrew word, Haya. Haya. That's still, let it be. Right. It's interesting, because even it says a beacon. That's where Yahweh got his life from, because he gets he got all his power from the Father. So it's a beacon. That's the source of the light. <laughs> Praise Ahaya. Right. This gospel is wonderful. We have this word, and Moses was not the only one that was told. Ahaya testified that this was his name to God the seer, as well as Yahweh. When we look in the scriptures, Yahweh confirmed it while he was on the earth. In John chapter 8, verse 56 to 58. Now, keep in mind that that word haya means to exist, and it's emphatic, and it's not a mere copula auxiliary. It's not a casual word. Now, what we see in the Greek, what Yahweh says to the Pharisees, and look at the definition of the word that he said, we can substantiate that. He was saying ahaya from what words were used in the Greek language in John, John. Yeah, 8, 56 to 58. I'm sorry. Thank you. you know, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. So that's how you know Yache. He was the one speaking with Abraham. Right. <laughs> right? Continue. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. Hast thou seen Abraham? They didn't understand what Yahweh was in the spirit. They didn't understand that he was the word of life. Continue. Yahweh said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, Ahaya. <laughs> before Abraham was, I am. Now it's amazing. That word, when he said I am, the word G1510 for I am. Look at the definition there. <laughs> Email. That's the, the Greek word. It's not like a Hebrew word. <laughs> uh, first person singular present indicative. A prolonged form of a primary and defective verb. I exist. I exist. Right. Well, now continue reading. Used only when emphatic. <laughs> <laughs> Am. Have been. It is I. Was. That's Ahaya. Right. He said it means I exist. Used only in emphatic. And then it went on to say that was, it is, I am. Right. I exist. His name is Ahaya. Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya. And when you look in the Hebrew document, you can find the breakdown of the name in number 127. You'll find that breakdown on the name in the document. Continuing, let's look at the book of Gadesia. Now, Gadesia was a recent discovery. Right. So, they didn't get to tamper with this record as much as they messed with the other ones. And I was very gracious to leave us guidance in this book to know his name. In Gadesia, chapter 1, verse 53 and 54. Gadesia, verse 1, verse 53. And I, Gad's son of Abimelech, of the Jabez family, of the tribe of Yoda, son of Israel, was amazed by the scene and could not control my spirit. And the one dressed in linen came down to me and touched me, saying, 
There's an angel speaking to Gad now. Right. An angel again speaking right. to another Israelite. Okay. Write these words and seal them with the seal of truth. For Ahaya, the Ahaya is my name. Now that is amazing. He says, seal it with the seal of truth. For Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya is my name. Because mm -hmm. Ahaya, that Ahaya, the word that is Ashere. That's right. the same thing from Exodus 3 and 14. That's right. right. He says, seal it with the seal of truth. That Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya is my name. Mm -hmm. And what does it go on to say? And with my name, that shall bless all the house of Israel. Wow. For mm -hmm. they are of a true seed. The true seed would know the true name. Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya. We have three witnesses. Now, on the two or three witnesses, let a matter be established. That's right. He told Mushi, the angel, which was Yache, told Mushi the name of the father is Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya. And Yache is of that family because Yache is one of the Alahayams. He's the word of Alahayam. And he was the one speaking with us the whole time because no man has seen the Father at any time nor heard his voice according to John 1 and 18. That's right. So that's why Yahshua told him in John 8 and 56 to 58 that Abraham rejoiced to see my day and was glad because Yahshua was the one interacting with Abraham. And then he says, before Abraham was, I am. And we saw that that word meant I exist, used in the emphatic just like the Hebrew word Haya, Ahaya. And used in the emphatic, and it meant I am, I was, I've been, it is I. And then, of course, what's said to God is so straightforward and profound. The seal, the seal of truth, that Ahaya Ashre Ahaya is my name. And with my name shall I bless the house of Israel, for they are of a true seed. The testimonies give us a complete understanding, and we thank Ahaya for it. I'm sorry, man. I gotta read the definition. <laughs> You have not done me any harm, my brother. <laughs> you have not done me any harm. I'm looking at the definition for beacon, and it's a verb, right? Mm -hmm. It says, to act as a beacon, to give light to as a beacon, to light up, to illuminate. Yeah, to be illumined. Right. Oh, wow. This Ahaya is really right. confirming what is. That he was the source. Right. He is the source. Because he said that the Father has life in himself, so hath the Son life in himself. Well, how could the Son be the light without the Father giving him the light? Right. The light had to come from somewhere. Right. And then he said everything he's seen his Father do, so does he do. His Father was light, so he learned to be light from his Father. Right. Oh, wow. And the Holy Spirit is the brightness of the everlasting light, according to Wisdom chapter 7. As a wife is an adornment of a husband. So she got the light too. Yes. <laughs> this is great, brothers and sisters. We have a great opportunity to escape the darkness of this world. The beacon, Ahaya, is calling upon us. Well, he said the darkness could not comprehend the light. So all the things that are being revealed, they can't understand it. It's amazing. And the power of words power of the Hebrew language. It's, it's wonderful understanding. We praise Ahaya for this opportunity. And now, to substantiate this wonderful revelation, we look at the book of Genesis. Because there's something special about the word Haya. The word Haya is the only Hebrew word to denote existence in the spiritual realm and physical realm. This is why in creation, the word Haya was used to create all the works of the heavens from Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 to 7 the light, the firmament and the angels when you read Jubilee chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 you know that the angels and all the spirits the different works that Ahaya had were done on the first day but when making things that only are for the physical realm he simply said Amaro which is to avouch, to command so that we can see that the word when creating spiritual beings or spiritual entities, he used the word Haya. But for things of the earth, he just used Amaro. He just commanded it, charged it. He just testified it. But when the heavenly realms, he said, Haya, let it be. Because it emanated from him. Of course, the physical things is his handiwork as well. But they're not spirit. He is 
the beacon of spirit, the, the beacon of light, beacon of light. He is everything. He literally is Ahaya. He just is. Let's start from Genesis 1 and 3. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. And Allah Hayyam said, let there be light. And there was light. And when he said, let there be light, the word there is Haya. You see 1961 there, when you have your accordance to go look, you see that he said Haya. Haya. Right, because the light, the light that he created was in the heavens. It's a, it was a heavenly entity. And Yacha was that light. <laughs> so there's a heavenly entity, right? There's a spiritual thing. Continue. And Alahim saw the light, that it was good. And Alahim divided the light from darkness. And Alahim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And Alahim said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. In that verse as well, when he said, let there be, he used Haya as well, because the firmament is in the heavens. <laughs> right? Continue. And Allah Haya made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And Allah Haya called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning were the second day. And Allah Haya said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear. Now notice, this is a work in the physical realm. Right. He didn't say Haya there. The word that he used was Amaro. It's H559. It's a primitive root. And of course, you know the Igbo. We have the primitive root of this primitive root. It means to say, answer, appoint, avouch. <laughs> it's, still, it's still in our language to this day. So with things of the earth, he just avouched it. He just spoke it, and that was that. The spiritual things of the spiritual realm, he said, Haya. He spoke that emphatic word, because these were eternal things being created. Let's jump to verse 14 and 15. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And Allah said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, and divide the day from the night. He said, Haya again. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament. He said, Haya again. <laughs> Good to To give light upon the earth. And it was so. And he said, Haya again at the end when he said it was. <laughs> right? Continue. And Allah made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And Allah set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And jump to verse 20. Now look back at something in just the physical realm. What does he say there? And Allah said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. And now we see he didn't say Hayat there. He said Amaro, H559. And again, you can find these words in the Hebrew document. We encourage you to download it. See see the revelation that Ahaya has shown and right. understand what the true Hebrew language is. And notice all these creatures, they die. Right. They weren't created with Haya. It just was spoken. Right. He is all powerful. But through that it gives us further understanding to understand why his name is Ahaya. Ahaya is the word that has emphatic power in the spiritual realm and the physical realm. Now, there are some other words that mean to exist. Well, what we're going to see is these words don't mean to exist in the spiritual realm. Right. It's carnal. Right. That's why these words are not used in the creation. Go to H 1961, okay. because they had said to compare to H 1933. Right. I have be gracious unto us. We're going to compare and see if they're the same word. They said a primitive root. Uh, let me read the definition again, please. A primitive root. This is age 1961. Right. Compared to 1933. To exist, that is, be or become, come to pass, always emphatic, and not a mere copula auxiliary. Beacon altogether, be or become, accomplished, committed like, break, cause, come or come to pass. Now, let's look at 1933. 1933 is Hava. That's what it is in the Yiddish. Right. And in reality, this word is in our language, and it actually is Uwa. Right. This word is Uwa. In the Hebrew, the word Uwa, like 
we call ahaya onye keluwa. Onye is the one, the, the person, kelo. Kelo is to divide, like no kelo. This is in the document, it says, the onye keluwa, the one that created this universe. The one that created this physical plane, this existence. So the word uwa is actually describing this physical, tangible existence that we're in. Things you can touch, feel, and see. It's not talking about the spiritual things like the angels and, and spirits and entities that are in the other realm. Right. Hence, when we read the definition, you're going to see why the definition is what it is. <laughs> and we understand. I have suffered us to understand it through the language. It's, um, uh, the strongs, please. Right. It's H 1933. A primitive root compared to H 183 in 1961 supposed to mean properly to breathe. Properly to breathe. Right. Now you see this is carnal. It's it's talking about carnality because it's talking about physical things to breathe, right. hence uwa, right? Continue to be in the sense of existence. In the sense of existence, because when you right. Adam he breathed into man the breath of life and he became a living soul. Right. Adam became alive in uwa in this right. physical existence. Right. This word uwa is actually in the name of Adam's wife. Her right. name is Chiwa. Right. Chi means to show forth. And uwa means to exist. That's why she's called the mother of all living because mankind emanates from her out of her womb. Chiwa. The word uwa, when you get the opportunity to look at the Hebrew document, get further understanding on that word. So if you have, for example, in Job chapter 37 verse 6, that word is used there. For he saith to the snow, be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. And that word be is age 1933, Uwa. And when you read Enoch 69 and 22, it shows you that the snow, rain are stored in chambers in the heavens waiting on his command to be seen in the visible world. So when he says be, he's telling you, appear in the earth, <laughs> Uwa. So from the language, he suffers to understand this word is talking about physical existence, right. plainly. And that's why he said it meant to breathe, because it's carnality. Right. It's not spirit. It's not the emphatic haya right. as the name ahaya. That's why this word uwa was not used in the creation when speaking of the heavenly things that were made and the spiritual things that were made. But uwa is referring to the physical existence. Mm. And you definitely get more understanding of it from the full breakdown of it in the document and we encourage you to look at it and you have another word it said the H 1933 said to compare H 183 now H 183 that's a complete other word that's Owa which means to covet or to lust there's another word that we'd like to touch on in the Chaldean language that means to exist as well. And we're going to see that this is also carnal because it actually comes from age 1933, which is Uwa. Right. It's uh, age 1934, please. It's a wonderful thing because the fact that Ahaya has suffered us to know all these words in Igbo, or which is actually Hebrew to this day, right. it helps clarify and understand what the people in the concordance try to confound and leave us in the dark about. So you have the word H 1934 Chaldee corresponding to H 1933 to exist used in a great variety of applications especially in connection with other words be become behold you know he says using a bunch of different varieties right. and this comes from his corresponding to 1933 so that already lets you know it has to do with carnality because right. 1933 is uwa and then it says, behold, notice this has to do with seeing. Because right. when things are in the physical world, <laughs> you can see it, right? Continue with the definitions there. It says, um, behold, came to pass. Not come to pass, came to pass. I mean, it's already in the physical existence. Mm -hmm. Cease, cleave, consider. Now, why it means cleave? Because the word wa. Wa means to cut or split. 
Ah, it's very gracious. We really encourage you to look at that document to get to see the wonderful revelation of how these words are Hebrew um, and still understood in the Igbo language. Consider, do, give, have. Now, even to consider, you look upon something as you consider it. Right. You have to see it. To judge, keep, labor, mingle, or mingle self. Put, see, seek. These were the key words as well, to see or seek. Now, the spelling of this Hebrew word is they have the Hebrew letter H, the Hebrew letter W, and the Hebrew letter A. This word is Huwa. The why it says to see or seek or behold, because in the Igbo language, the word Hu means to see. Like we tell somebody, I, I, I love you. When you're in the Igbo today, they say, Aharum Ginanya, where Huru means like I see you, Aharum, I see you with my eyes, Aharum Ginanya. So we can understand why it means to see or behold, because Hu means to see. And we also understand why it means to exist. It's in this physical world because it has the uwa in there. And we can, uh, it suffered us to understand the Chaldean words because Chaldean comes from Hebrew. So these words do not give the same meaning as ahaya. These are carnal words in this physical plane. And you have the understanding of the uwa as well with chiwa, with the first woman's name, to be the life giver. The people of this world emanate from her womb. The physical existence come from her womb because she's the mother of all living in this physical plane. So we see those things. And then the name of Satan. They have told us that Ahaya's name was these other names, Yahweh and Jehovah or Yahuwah and Yahweh. When you look at the definition of these words in the Hebrew language, it's actually not so because these words don't describe Ahaya. You have to look at the root words and understand the words. Just as we look like Haya, Ka'ah means I, Ahaya, I am, I be, I exist. Now, we've been shown from the scriptures what he's described as. He's described as being eternal. And we've already seen that the word H 1933 and H 1934, they don't exemplify eternal being. Right. It's carnal. That's why it said to breathe, to see and behold. These are all carnal things. Let's look at these words for the Jehovah or the Yahweh to see what they actually mean. In the Hebrew document, you can find those words in number 75 and number 76. Can you go to Numbers chapter 11 and 4, please? Numbers 11 and 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Now that word lusting is awa. The word means to lust because... Wa means in Igbo, wa is continuous. It's continuous, continuous. It's more and more and more and more. It's describing lusting because you can't have enough. Awa. And that same root word, awa, is actually in the name for what is Hades or hell. The word is chowalo. Chowa. Hell is always coveting. It always wants more and more and more as the scriptures describes it. So you have chowalo, that awa. Is that same word in there that denotes coveting, which is the word for lust in H183, which is awa. Now we're going to look at the word for iniquity, which is H1942. If we can go to Psalms 94 and 20, please. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? That word iniquity is 1942. And can you read the definition of that, please? Yes, in the sense of eagerly coveting and rushing upon, by implication of falling, desire also ruin, calamity, iniquity, mischief, mischievous thing, naughtiness, naughty, noisome, perverse thing, substance, very wickedness. This is the root word for what is called Yahweh right. or Yahweh or Yahuwah, or Jehovah, or yod heh wah all these names are, they're calling on Satan. From the, the definition of the word and in the Hebrew language, the word 1942 is Hawa. Ha makes it Hawa, the word Wa means to want, as we discussed. 
And wa also means to break. That's why it's like ruin and calamity. Because it's lust and that is destroying. So you have hawa or hawa. This is wickedness and iniquity according to the definition. And the ya, that's uh, H3050, which describes that one or the most vehement. In the evil, or evil, if you're speaking to an evil person, they'll understand if you say onye. Because that means that person, that one. And the ye is still in there. And they also understand ya because that's it, he, him. So if we were to say Yahawa, that's that wicked one, that wicked person, that covetous person. So according to the language, that's not the name of Ahaya. Because this word Hawa, or Hawa in age 1942, as well as age 1943, which is another form of it. Can you read Ezekiel 7 and 26, please? Mischief shall come upon mischief. And rumor shall come upon rumor. And that word mischief is age 1943, which is Hawa. And it means ruin and mischief as well. Right. So these words are not describing the Father. Right. According to what the Hebrew language is, they are not describing Him. And they have very much tried to corrupt our souls to have us calling upon this evil name. Right. Thinking that it's going to save us. Because they've been very arrogant against Allah Hayyam and exalted themselves against Ahaya to put this name in the records because it's in Exodus 6 and 3. You go to Exodus 6 and 3 so we can see what definition they put there. They put one definition but Ahaya showed us according to the language that's not his name. Right. And we've seen that the word meant the throne of iniquity. So the word has to do with iniquity, mischievousness. The root word of these words is H183, which is Awa, which is lusting. This is not Ahaya. Right. We know who was the luster from the beginning. Right. It's Satan. Exodus 6 and 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Ithichakwai, and Jacob, by the name of Allah, Almighty. And so as he told them, his name was Allah Shodai. But he, we know, he told Mushi that his name was Ahaya. But here in this verse, they put the tetragrammaton in there. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them? Now, this was not true. Because right. when we tap on the word, that word is Y-H-W-H. -H. That's Yahawa or Yahowah. And that has to do with coveting and wickedness and iniquity according to the actual Hebrew word. And they also put... The Jewish national name of Allah Hayyam. They said it is from 1961, the self-existence. Now, they have really deceived us because when you literally look at the words, Hawa is H-W-H. -H. Haya is H-Y-H. -H. They're two different words. They are not the same word. And when it says the Jewish national name of Allah Hayyam, they, according to Revelation chapter 2 and 9, are the synagogue of Satan. So make no marvel that Tetragrammaton, that YHWH, is the name of their deity. And they do worship him. Because he's the father of lies. And there was a lie and a murderer from the beginning. But Ahaya, which is the beacon of light, Ahaya, the true Allahayam, the living Allahayam, his name leads us unto life, unto keeping the commandments. So we encourage you, please get the Hebrew document to understand the word study so you can get more in-depth understanding of the words. And to add on the edification, if one says that Uwa, because Uwa means to physically exist, that his name is Yahuwa or Yahuwa, you're still not calling upon him because that's carnal existence. Right. Ahaya is eternal. Uwa in the Hebrew language does not denote or describe or characterize eternity or coming from the spiritual realm. It's just a carnal word for carnality. That's why it's used in the word for the mother of men, of mankind, Chiowa. And that's why in the Chaldean language in age 1934 to see or behold because it has to do with physical things that you can see in this earth. Right. And that's why in 1933 it needs to breathe. Because it's 
things in this physical existence, in this physical world as tangible, as opposed to haya, ahaya, ashere ahaya. This is the true name. And the Tetragrammaton, we praise Ahaya for giving the edification on it, and we encourage you all to stay away from that name. Do not give it any credence, nor call it upon yourself or ascribe yourself to it. Because the true gospel was also, in part, to know the true name. Because right. this is a part of the awakening to the truth. Right. If we look at Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 to 21. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. And though I give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. You shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Well, in John 17 said, All that the Father has given him in his hand, he hasn't lost any of them. So those that belong to Yahshua, they will hear. That's they right. will understand. Right. You got the holy angels making sure each time that you start doing right, you complete one thing, they're taking you to the next to complete you. This is their task. Their task is to be over you and to make sure that you get to where you're supposed to be and you achieve that level of righteousness that you're supposed to achieve. They can't leave you until their job is complete. And when their job is complete, it's when you die or the end of the world. <laughs> so they can't leave you at all. So they're constantly checking and making sure that you're growing. After you complete this, they give you the next thing to work on until you're complete. So it's, it's amazing. But Donnie Yaché had given them orders to make sure that we're all on course. He won't let us turn to the right nor the left. They gored us. Bringing us back in every oh, time. Right. <laughs> right. Like every like time right. Off, <laughs> get back in there. Right. Get back in the right. line. <laughs> Praise him for his instruction. That's There's amazing. a verse in Micah six and eight that was profound that I showed how to actually know the name, what it takes. Because yeah. it requires something of us for us to understand it. Micah six, verse eight and nine. He has showed thee, O oh man, what is good. And what do the higher require of thee but to do justly? The higher wants us to do justly. And right. to love mercy. Bear the fruits of the Spirit. And to walk humbly with thy Elohim. Be as Yahche. Humble ourselves to learn again. Right. Become little children and relearn. And what would this cause? Go ahead. And the higher voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod. And who have appointed it? Ahaya, the voice of Ahaya crieth in the city. Remember Isaiah 30 he said, You'll hear a voice behind you telling you this is the way, We're right? In it. Right, and he says, And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Right. So when you humble yourself, you'll hear that cry. Right. And you're going to actually see the name. And it's powerful because we started off with the what name meant. Right. Name was an appellation. Right? Name also is a character. Right. When you humble yourself, you'll hear that voice telling you what his name actually is. And also, you'll see what his character actually is. Right. You'll see how you are to operate as the angels are guiding you. They're going to open your eyes to see, I need to be full of mercy. Right. I need to be full of graciousness, long-suffering, goodness, patience, abundant in truth. Walking in the fruits of the Spirit, in temperance, right. enduring tribulation, that I may put on holiness, integrity, loving all creation, because you see that the Spirit of Yahche is in everything. And it's going to bring you to the law. <laughs> this is the great opportunity that we have in Ahaya to abide in Him, to right. walk in the fruits and actually see Him. And Yahche is who is actually revealing him unto us. Right. And in closing, we look at Isaiah 52, verse 2 to 7, to see that this is a part of our awakening, to know his name. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 2. 
Shake thyself from the dust, arise, and sit down, O Yodo child. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. So this come out of the sins. Get out of the dirt. Get clean. Get that dirt off of you. O captive daughter of Sayano. For thus saith Ahaya, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith Adonai Ahaya, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, saith Ahaya, that my people have taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to have, saith Ahaya. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. Verse 6. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doeth speak. Behold, it is I. This is that time that we are in. That he made us known his name now. And this is the opportunity that we have in Mashiach Ayache. To know Ahaya, the loving father, through our Adonayache. And by the effectual working of his spirit in us, and by the increasing of the Ruach Akwadushi, our mother, to lead us unto all obedience in the Holy Spirit, and work in all sincerity and truth unto Ahaya Alahayam. With that, this is why the name of Ahaya is the name, the true name of Alahayam, and the name that we call upon. True eternal father. Yes. Ahaya Ashari Ahaya. Yeah. Pray unto Ahaya. Ask him for guidance. He doesn't forsake anyone of a contrite heart and a humble spirit. Ahaya be with you that believe in Yachin Ishyaka. The hope of glory. Shalom. Shalom.